Hey, hey, everybody. Here we go again. Sports Take Live, your voice for sports, your voice for what is happening in the world of sports. And we have some monumental things that have recently happened in sports. Uh, we're going to talk. We're going to start with the NBA. We at the finals. Uh, let's review what we talked about. Uh, well, we know who are in the finals. Uh, right now, it's the Dallas Mavericks and the Boston Celtics. So uh, we talked about we talked about it on the show many times. Uh, are, are we surprised who's in the finals? Anybody? Uh, Anybody? I'm not surprised at one of the two. Yes, I, yeah. I predicted that Boston would be in, but no, I did not predict that Dallas would be in. I yeah. predicted this would be the Denver Nuggets and the Boston Celtics. So I predicted I, to be recall, I said I predicted Denver, but I predicted Dallas was a rising tide. Dallas was a rising tide, and they kept rising, and they are there now. And I think they got more depth unless poor singers comes back than Boston does. We're gonna see about that. Uh brother Bingham, what you think about the NBA playoffs and how it's gone? Actually, it was real interesting. Uh, Minnesota surprised me because they couldn't finish. They they just could not finish. They had them down three games and just could not put them away. And it looked like to me that um, Ant-Man kind of disappeared. And he would only show up when they really needed him. And, and to be a champion, you got to play the whole game. You can't, you can't do that. You can't disappear. And in my mind, that, that was part of their problem. Their stars didn't show up when they really had to have it. If you, if you notice, they tried to compare him with Michael Jordan. Michael <laughs> Jordan never gave up. I mean, Michael Jordan was on it from the time the ball went up until it was over. So I agree uh, with that, Brother Bringham. Yeah. But uh, remember the first five to seven years of Michael's career, he got beat uh, by Detroit every year until he solved the Jordan rules. I just think Ant-Man is a young man and he got to get more and more into discipline of the game rather than talking the game. I My agree with that. But he also has got to get some people behind him as well. He also noticed that Michael Jordan had a lot of good players playing with him. Players who played that role. Yeah. Brother Allen, what you think about it? Well, I, I picked Denver and and they had Boston slipping in, but um Dallas came on late in the year, made some trades late midseason, and and I think Jason Kidd did a great job coaching, getting Kyrie and um Luca to play together. Now I know they they got together late last year. Didn't have enough time to gel, but once they gel, they did really well. And then you know Boston has a lot of talent, so uh, I think it's a good matchup because Boston Boston is really good and they should they're deserving to be in there. But I think Dallas has gotten hot at the right time, and Dallas has a you know has a lot of depth as well. So it, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be exciting. Yes, sir. Brother Jeff, you wanted to ask some uh, questions from the past. Go ahead at this particular time. Okay. Uh, real quick, I want to introduce our, uh, our two guests. We have uh, Kevin Allen. Kevin Allen uh, is the uh, staff assistant and he's the, tickets, uh, the season ticket coordinator. He's the asset director of Nike Pro City Houston for the last 12 years, and he's the co-host of TSU Sports. All right, so we thank you, Kevin Allen, for coming on the show. Our other guest is Coach Kemet uh, Brigham from uh, from um, Miller Junior High. Miller Junior High, he was a Miller Junior High coach back when we were at Miller Junior High, when uh, uh, Phil and I were at Miller Junior High back in 74 through 76. And uh, he was the coach of that team that set the national record, the national scoring record for uh, for one game, 183 points as Houston, as uh, Miller beat Sharpstown. So he was the coach of that team. And of course, uh, our on staff, on air uh, partner here, Philip Green, was on that team. So 
With that being said, we just want to ask him a few questions about that team. Coach, all right, coming into that game, you guys, season high for the previous year was only 133 points. I remember my boy C.B. Collins played on that team. So my question is, what happened the previous day in practice or that day of the game that made you think that you guys can put it together and have a game like this? Well, let me let me correct you before we started because uh, the head coach of that team was was Huey, Coach Huey. Okay. And okay. I, was his, I was his assistant. But to answer your question, uh, practice was just normal. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we had a really good group of kids. But you know how you have a real good group of kids that just don't gel when they're supposed to? Okay. That team had started coming together, but nobody could have predicted it, man. I mean, I, I coached for 20 years, and I usually could look into the eyes of my players and say, look like we're going to have a good game. I couldn't okay. do that that day. I, that, they gotcha. looked like they were just there. Okay. And uh, <laughs> when, the, when the ball went up, they went nuts. Okay. Yeah, it wow. was uh, – this is the most astonishing thing I've ever seen. Uh, myself as well. I mean, who would you say was the best player on that uh, record-setting team? Hard to say um, who was the best player on that team because the best shooter was uh, Norman Johnson. Okay. But then, then you had Ricky Thompson, and you had General Taylor. Uh, okay. Those boys could go, man. I mean, it was. If I were to say the best player, you would have to probably give it to Ricky because he was real upset after that game because he only scored 18 points. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't blame him. I don't blame him. The put up 183 points and your best player don't score 18. I can understand that. Yeah, I had to talk to him for about 20 minutes after the game. I'm like, what is your problem? You know, he, he, scored 18. <laughs> he only scored 18. General scored 26. And Norman scored 36. But wow. Norman Johnson, Norman Johnson could just flat out shoot. He was wow, he could. He oh, could. he was unbelievable. Yeah. He actually ended up over at Johnston uh, Middle School with uh with uh well um, uh, the vice president right here with Carl Baruti Carl Alexander. Carl, you remember Norman? He showed up here with uh, Johnston Middle School. I do, Joe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I do. Uh, who would who would you say, Coach, was the best player you ever coached at Miller? Philip Green. Philip Green. Whoa. Yeah. Wow. Philip Green. Look at Phil. Look at Phil. <laughs> he blushing. I see you blushing, Philip. I see you. I see it. Philip Green, folks. Okay, Philip Green. Tell us why, coach. Well, you know how you have that rare combination of a of a player that could get everybody involved in the game? Yes, sir. And it and it didn't matter what he did or what his game was like, they always had a good game. Uh, I remember when we went to play a team. I don't know if, if he remembers this, but we played uh, Francis Scott Key. We were down by 10 points at after. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was so upset. I didn't have anything to say to him. I just said, I give you two minutes to show me what you want to do because I will go lose with the second string. <laughs> I, I, he'll tell you. I told him I'll lose with the second string. Then I'll well, know why I'm losing. And uh, after two minutes, we were down by one. And wow. uh, yeah, okay. yeah, and he he just he took him to the side. He talked to him, and I don't know what he told him, but they came out ready to play. I mean, it was it was amazing. It was okay. amazing. I, I he was he was one of those guys that he wasn't the fastest kid. He couldn't jump the highest, and he wasn't the best shooter on the team. But he could get everybody involved, just the way you wanted it to be. So it sounded like to me he had outstanding leadership skills. Yes, he did. He absolutely did. Okay, sounds good. Uh coach, our our call going into uh going into that season, that would be the last season we were there. So it's our eighth grade year. And I remember the guys on the team, they were bragging, they thought they was gonna have a good season. So they're going into the season, they thought they was gonna go all the way. And here we are in the first district game of the year. We're playing against Lanier. You guys lose to Lanier, and I remember how the student body got on the team really hard. He's like, how y'all lose to Lanier? Y'all been bragging about going all the way all, all semester, and you guys lose the first district game of the year to Lanier, but we didn't know about a guy by the name of Rob Williams. 
Tell us about Rob <laughs> Williams, know. folks. <laughs> we knew. <laughs> yeah, we Tell knew. Us that, about boy, Williams. that boy was uh, Lanier. unbelievably good. I saw him in high school beat. Uh, he, he, he didn't even play the whole game. And he was hurt. He had an ankle injury. And there was like five seconds left in the game. And the coach put him in the game. And Rob Williams hit, you know, what we call three-point shots right now. He hit one of those shots with the with the <laughs> clock going down. And Mil I mean, and Milby won that ball game. And I sat there and remembered how he did us. And I thought, well, that was no fluke. This guy is the real deal. <laughs> wow. He, he was the real deal. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Who would you say uh would or uh, would you say he is the guy? Who would you say was the best high school player that you ever witnessed? Wow. That's uh that's a loaded question. Right here in Houston. I'm, I'm talking about here locally. Oh, um Rob was good. Um I remember Drexler. I remember Winslow. I remember, oh my goodness. Uh, there was a guy from Bel Air. I can't remember his name. He mm. was scoring like 30 some points a game and he went to Notre Dame. I can't remember. Elmer Bennett. Bennett. What's Elmer his name? Bennett. Bennett. Elmer Bennett. Okay. Yeah, okay. that boy was good. Uh, okay. Um, that would be hard for me to say because okay. I remember uh, Wheatley had some great kids. Oh, yeah. I was going to uh, ask you about that Wheatley team, those Wheatley teams. Yeah, we uh, when we played Wheatley in high school, they had uh, what was the big tall guy name? Uh, uh, Eddie Owens. Now. Dwight, Jones. Dwight Jones. Dwight Jones. Okay. Then they had Spider Man, and then they had uh, Jerry Bonney, okay. who was just like Philip. He okay. was a guy that could get everybody going, you know. But Jerry was okay. a he was an awesome player. So I it's hard for me to say, man. Houston had so many. So many good players. Uh, I guess the the best player I ever saw come through had to be this guy from Worthing, and he was um, we called him Tweety, and he was um, he went to Pan American mm -hmm. University, and he never never made it out of there. He was the closest thing I've seen to playing like Michael Jordan. Can I remember his name right now? Um, I bet you I remember before the, the show is over. But <laughs> to me, he was probably the best. He was six foot six. He could dribble. He could shoot. He took words into the state championship. They lost to I am Terrell. And the reason they lost is because he fouled out. Okay. And it, had he stayed in the ball game, they would have won. But uh he was simply outstanding. Are you talking Richard about Herman Gross. Crawford? Richard Gross. Okay. What's his name? Oh, head Richard on Gross. call. Richard oh, Gross. Head on call. <laughs> Look yeah, him up. That's called that's called making woods. He grew up with <laughs> I know that's why I I'm saying he probably would know. Yeah, Richard Gross. That's who he was. Yeah. yeah. Okay. He was wow. And then yeah, we 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 had some really good players back then. But I, out of Houston, I think to me, he was probably the best because he could do anything at his size. He was 6'6", six, six. he could jump, he could run, he could shoot, he could pass, he could dribble. There was nothing he couldn't do. He was outstanding. But what, uh, he, oh, he oh, had to let the streets get to him, so yeah. that was oh, that. Okay. Coach, when you left Miller, Miller, of course, they closed Miller down in 76, much to our, much to our chagrin, because uh, me and Philip, uh, we only had one year left. So uh, quite naturally, I wasn't happy about it. But anyway, they didn't ask me. W once they closed down Miller, where did you go? Uh, Albert Thomas. Okay, when it was Albert Thomas. Okay, that's where I met Clyde Drexler. Okay, okay, so he was over there uh, with with, uh, with Clyde Paul at Albert Thomas. Okay, yeah. So was, Albert Thomas, how long were you there? Just a year. Wait, one then year. they then, you then they sent me to Lanier. Oh, you ended up at Lanier. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. How long were you at Lanier? Uh, I was at Lanier two years. Okay. Then okay. I came to Fort Bend. Okay. All yeah. right. All right. Sounds good. Uh, okay, Carl, we can go ahead and go on with the rest of the program. I just wanted to ask him a few questions. All right. Well, the most interesting thing that happened that a lot of people did not predict is the last heavyweight fight. Mm. Uh, Bert, were you surprised about what happened in the last heavyweight fight? 
Yep. Yeah, I was. I didn't I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> Did you see any of the highlights or saw the fight itself? No, I just heard about it. I, I actually didn't see it. You know, you know, for me, I boxing is not like it used to be to me, you know. It's just not um uh, it's not they don't have a lot of good boxes in my opinion anymore like they used to, you know. So I don't I don't pay a hundred dollars or something, you know, to go watch, you know, to watch it. So just kind of hear about it or see it on ESPN, some highlights. But yeah, I was surprised about it. But I will say, you know, Tyson Fury being 6'9, 280, and the way he devastated three times Devontae Wilder. Yeah. Uh, he seemed kind of formidable, but I saw highlights of that fight. And in the early rounds, he was play, trying to play with an, another heavyweight. And I don't think you should ever do that. what you say, Phil? That's exactly what happened. He gave away some early rounds and then he got tired and he got hit with some yeah. good shots. Maybe. And, and yeah. you heavyweight, you got to punch his chance. And that's what happened to him. And he lost on split decision. He thought yeah. he was going to win. I did see some highlights on YouTube, though. YouTube, you can go catch some of that stuff on YouTube. So, I, mean, I thought they should have. I saw he should have been knocked out. I thought they should have stopped the fight. <laughs> that guy was all on the ropes, looked like he was completely out. He lucky they didn't stop that fight. That should have been a knockout. And then when it was all said and done, he only lost by one point. <laughs> it was a split decision. He lost by one. That's how quickly they are. How 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 close they came to taking that fight away from the other guy. That's why uh, you got that guy, out. Uh, Alexander Usyk. I mean, he beat uh, uh, Joshua, and he beat him legitimately. Yeah. He, he's a legitimate yeah. fighter. Yeah, and you can't. You know, Tyson Fury was playing, trying to play around the first rounds, and you don't play in, 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 in boxing with a heavyweight. You, you exactly. just don't do that. You better, exactly. you better be super confident if you come in there playing. Uh, Brother Allen, you got to come in on that. I'm 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 like Bert on that one. I'm not a big boxing fan. It's not like it used to be. Yeah. Um, I'm I, I think they miss they're missing the big punches like you know the heavyweights back in the day. Then you had the lightweights, the middleweights. Yeah. It was really exciting to me, but not yeah, a big yeah. boxing guy right now. Yeah, it's just you know right. my dad. Right. My dad taught me how to box, and I see these guys getting hit with punches. They shouldn't be getting hit with. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what happened to defense? <laughs> you know, just real quick, real quick, Jeff. You know the the guy. Um, I can't think of his name right now. Out of Dallas, who fought Crawford? Spence. Was, yeah, Spence, yeah, Spence. yeah, him. I mean, okay. Earl Spence. I mean, the guy that that's the guy from Dallas. He, you know, worked uh, Michael Parsons worked out with him. I, I that was the last fight I paid to see. Okay. And man, I was just I was just so disappointed, man, because he didn't really give him a fight. So. You know, to me, like I said, boxing has been it's a dying breed type of sport. A lot of people are into that MMA stuff now. Yeah, you know, that's, that's true. A lot that's of true. people like nowadays, and that's too brutal for me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just hey, we got to throw a, a, the conversation about the gimmick fight or the legitimate fight, whichever <laughs> way you look at it. Uh, Tyson and Paul, I'm going to say this. Uh, Jake Paul, he has learned to fight, and there were people that have underestimated him, but he actually trained, he actually worked hard, and of course, now fighting against Mike Tyson at any age is a is a bigger thought than, you know, you, you should go into, but what we think about that fight, uh, Tyson, Jake Paul. That's well, first man. of all, okay, go, go ahead, ahead, brother Allen. No, that's, that's the young man, and Tyson, what, 57? 57. 57. I don't, you know, we can we we can remember Mike when in his in his prime, but Mike is not in his prime. And if you ever saw that Jake Paul on YouTube, I'm worried about Mike. I'm gonna be honest with you. I would love to see him knock him out, but I I I I, I don't know, man. I just uh that's a risk he taking, man. And you know, Paul is Paul can hit. He can hit. He can really flat out hit. So it's gonna be interesting. I'm gonna say that. But I'm pulling for Mike. Well, this is how I feel about it. 
I think Mike needs to sit down somewhere. I mean, you, you can go <laughs> fight you go. A, a Buster Douglas. Uh, you can go fight <laughs> Vander yeah. Holyfield. Or right. uh, you can go fight Coach uh, Coach Br- uh, Brigham. You know, uh, maybe maybe even Phillips. But sit down somewhere. Mike, you, you can't fight right now, man. That guy is 30 years uh, younger than you. Right, so right, you right, have to yeah. understand let me, let me your, your reflexes. Look your how reflexes much Mike is going to make up in this fight. And yeah, he'll make some about the paper. I think they, they, they postponed that fight, right? They did. He he had ulcers. Mike is having health yeah. issues. Yeah, so it has yeah. to be postponed. That, so that brain. may be a blessing. Yeah. 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 He says his ulcers keep flying up. Right. right. He and he can't train right now. He can't he can't train right now. So yeah. that's why yeah. I need to postpone it. Awesome, man. God. Man. Yeah. Yeah. He's just sitting, that's why I say he just said, I don't know. Mike himself. You know, when he didn't have nothing to do, his weight ballooned up over 300 pounds, and then he start working on himself, taking care of himself, uh, watering his weed farm, and yeah. he, he, he's, he, he's in better mental as physical shape. And hey, for 20 million, I'd get out there too. <laughs> That's twenty million dollars. Hey, how would you say you want to deny him that opportunity? And don't underestimate Mike Tyson. Many have tried to underestimate him before, and it was thirty seconds later where they they said, "Oh, I shouldn't have underestimated him." <laughs> Carl, he was Carl, but he wasn't fifty-seven years old in fighting. Exactly, Carl. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. I'm gonna ask you, this is a question for everybody. Kevin, Jeff, Mr. Brigham, Mr. Green, and even you call. How many boxers we know that retired and came back to try to, to regain that glory time again in their life? Too they many. got knocked out. You know what out. Too yeah. many. Yeah. Many of them. Come on, man. Too Only many. Only guys who have been needed successfully. So what with makes you think, you know, we have some great heavyweights that Came out of retirement. Don't be for the time. Yeah, you can't be for the time. You're right, Phil. Thank you. And I, as much as I love Mike, hey man, for the time is 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 is, is going undefeated. To undefeated. Yeah, undefeated. But well, I would say, right. but the problem is he pays well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he does. Now, he ain't for the check. He ain't for Lead the check. not into but, temptation. I mean, Mike. Mike got enough skills to know how to hold up. Hold him. <laughs> how, how much call? Michael professional, Michael professional boxing. I hear so 20 he, million. Both of them get 20 caught. million. Jay Paul get gets 20 million too. As <laughs> long as the money looks like that, they are fighting until yeah. they 75. As long as you got fools willing to pay I, for it, I, that's the problem. I don't want to see Mike. You got I don't want to see Hey, hey, I don't want to see Mike done like he done done people in the past. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And, and it's Leonard Lewis and I came out. That was hard. Mike. Uh, I think he's going to train. He, he, he's going to let some Just people know. Facts. Hey, I'm not too old. Yeah. <laughs> we, we'll we have see, one though. heavyweight that did that. Hey. And that was Joe Farmer. Go ahead. Michael Moore. Hey, guys. Uh, we talked about the NBA and the finals. Who do we have? Uh, who's going to win it? Let's get a, a a pick from everybody. Jeff, uh, okay, win. Can, you, okay, can I get my analysis real quick? Okay, after looking at both the uh, both finals, uh, conference final series, and uh, watching the styles and how the teams win, and I've determined that both of these teams, I see why they're so successful. They both have two star players who can get any shot they want and can make just about any shot they want. They can create their own offense. They can create offense for their teammates. So when you got guys that can score at every level, three-point range, as well as two-point range, as well as to get to the line and make an effective, uh, efficient free throws at a higher percentage, you're going to win. And you got Luca and Kyrie well, Irving, win, those yeah. guys, those guys are combining for like 77 points a game. So, and then of course you got Boston with Tatum and, and Brown. Wow. So with that being said, I got to go with, I want to go with Dallas. If Luca and, and Irvin continue to play the way they're playing, 
I don't see anyone beating them, especially with Lively being back and that other boy, uh, Ga Galford, slamming everything they throw at the basket. He's slamming it. And when you got uh, Luca making shots from 40 feet out, I mean, the guy just come across half court and throw it up in this number net. How you defend a guy like that? How? Who you got? I'm going. I'm going with that. So, uh, Bert, go ahead, Bert. Oh, well, you know, I picked uh, Minnesota and Boston to be in the finals, and I was surprised that Dallas knocked off Minnesota. I ain't gonna lie. You know, I really was surprised, but. I like what I'm seeing out of Dallas, but I'm I'm gonna break it down a little bit, Jeff, for you. You know, Tatum and Brown and Drew Holiday and White. That's a hell of a team right there. Them, them, they play bully ball. They really do. And much as I love Kyrie, feel to tell you, I love Kyrie, man, to the moon and back. That's mm -hmm. my guy. But he going to play, he going to shoot better. He played well, but he going to shoot better. So you know, it's it's you know, and then Boston has home court advantage. You know, the fans in Boston, man, they the worst fans in the world besides Philadelphia Eagle fans. Always so, have been. Always have know, been. So you know, I I think I think much as I hate Boston, and I'm not only team I ever liked in the East back in the day was Dr. J with Philly and Moses. I have never liked the Eastern Conference team other than those that team right there back in the day, but. Uh, I can't see. I can't. I, I can't see them beating Boston. I just. I just can't see it. But you know, I'm pulling for Dallas. You you my pick Boston, is, but you're pulling for Dallas. <laughs> okay. My is, my is, brother Allen, is, brother I, Allen. You to pick one, man. You gonna pick one, brother Allen. Allen. I, I didn't. I just. I just can't see them beating them. But my heart is in Dallas, man. I'm just gonna be honest with you, brother Allen. Who you got? I'm I'm taking Dallas. Okay. Um, I'm I'm taking Dallas because I I they're, they're both talented, um, but Boston will give a game up at home. So yeah. there's times that they yeah. they will play down and they'll give yeah. that game up at home. Even like when you saw the Indiana series, Indiana led game one get away. Yeah, and, and that uh, was the most good. Yeah, I think so they let all four get away. Yeah, they let them get away. So Boston, as talented as they are, <clears throat> I think yeah. on that particular team, Drew Holiday is the X factor for right. for Boston yeah. because he's going to be the guy to. that's going to yeah. have to go and defend. And right. then when and you know, yeah. So when you you look at 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 uh, at Boston, like Bird said, that they're deep, but you got to look at Dallas. And Nico Harrison, yeah. the GM, he's done a great yeah. job of building Tell that God. team with Tell Galford, God. Lively. Yeah. Kyrie, yep. Luca Jones, the second. I mean, you Tim Hardaway Jr. don't even get off the bench now. Not so, yet, so they they play defense. They're one of the better defensive teams in the league now. They, you know, people are still overlooking mm -hmm. that. And when you 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 got to get a bucket, they can go with Luca or Kyrie. I'm still not sure with Boston which guy they're comfortable with with taking that last shot with Tatum or Brown. So I'm 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 gonna take Dallas in this. So that, that's my pick. Okay. All right, br brother, bring him. I'm gonna go with Dallas because I think their uh, their big men are just playing out of their mind right now, man. They they're getting yeah. every rebound, loose balls. They're everywhere. I I haven't seen a second tier come at them like come at anybody like these guys do. So when I look at Boston. Uh, Jason Tatum to me is suspect. He doesn't always show up, and and you can say what you want. Uh, Kyrie and Luca are gonna get that ball to those big guys, and those big guys are gonna perform. I think Dallas is gonna take the whole thing. Now, do I think it's gonna be a sweep? No, no. no. I think they're gonna have to play hard because Boston is tough. It'd probably be a seven game series, I think. Yeah. I think yeah. there's at least six. At least six. I, I, I think it's six either way. We know there's four stars, but the supporting cast, like Coach said, is going to be vital on each side. And whichever supporting cast can do a little better, the other four guys may offset each other. But um, my prediction is I like to see Dallas winning in six, but my head tells me Boston is the better team. They've been a better team in the NBA all year. Yeah. And they could get That's it at six. But I'm gonna go on record as saying 
Dallas is six, but I won't be surprised if Boston, because it's going to go six minimum. Could be seven, but I think, like Kevin said, they can get a game in da in Boston, Dallas can. Yeah. If they can hold home court, it might not even go six. But that's just my my feeling. My my heart and head are two different things. So see, I'm like, see, like that call, he's towing too, but I'm gonna tell you what, I'm gonna go on record. I'm going with Dallas. I'm gonna go with <laughs> Dallas as well. I'm gonna go on record. Uh I'm going to go with Dallas as well. Right. The depth is, is great. Go on with him. Yeah. First, go on with him. The NBA draft is coming up, guys. The Rockets got the third pick. Uh, I don't see no consensus number one pick out there. Does anybody hear of see a consensus number one pick? Somebody who everybody say is the best player. Right now, I'm, I'm hearing here we have Victor Wembanyama. Right now, I'm hearing only roughly about seventy to seventy-five percent of them that are sold on the seven-one Frenchman guy, Alex Saar. Uh, 19 years old, 7'1", 216 pounds. Right now, he's being compared to uh, Jaron Jackson, plays for the Memphis uh, Grizzlies. Uh, right now, I'm hearing he's going number one. I've heard that, that as well. Uh, have you seen highlights of him? Yes, I have. Outstanding skill set. Outstanding. Yeah. Outstanding. So, will Atlanta, you believe, take him? And that depends on what Atlanta is going to do. What are some of the trades that we think need to be made out there to enhance some of these teams that are the Rockets uh, thinking about making a trade? Jeff? The Rockets are involved in a lot of trade talks with the number three pick. Uh, the Rockets, what I'm hearing, are not that enamored. Well, it's going to be on the board at three. And now they, they'll take who's on the board at three, but they're looking at other offers to see what's available. And if they can get a good grandfather deal where they can uh, get a team or get a package of players and maybe even a pick in addition, they would uh, take that deal to see if it's going to improve the team. So uh, they're going to they're going to exhaust all of those possible options before they make their selection at three. So what right, I'm hearing, I'm hearing the possibility of Paul George. I've heard the possibility of uh, Donovan Mitchell. I'm hearing some other names, but right now those are just... I heard Marcus name. Smart. Yeah, I've heard Marcus Smart, but right now it's just speculation. I'm hearing they're just doing their, their due diligence, saying what's the best deal out there, and if the best deal out there is a deal they can't turn down, then they're going to take that deal. But if they if it's not a good deal, then they're going to go ahead and make the third pick. And now it's just a matter of who you take at three. So now that's the next question. Who do, you, who do they take at three? Well, we don't know whether they're going to make a trade or... They're going to take that pick. And me personally, I think they if they made a trade to get somebody like Marcus Smart and he agreed to be a, a number one backup, uh, that would be a very good trade. But speaking of trades, I mean, how are some of these other teams going to improve themselves? I mean, you got the Warriors out of the playoffs. Phoenix out in the first round. The Lakers out in the first round. All of these teams need to improve themselves in some kind of way. What are some of those teams going to do? You have a comment on that, Brother Brigham? Yeah, I, I you know, I, I looked at um, some of these guys, and I really don't know, man. I mean, I look at the, the Rockets, and it, to be honest with you, to me, the Rockets are the best AAU team in the pros. I think I, they don't have a scheme they just come down shoot the ball just go yeah. you know you got they these got you got teams like when you watch Dallas when you watch Boston these people have a mission when they hit the floor you can watch the way they pass the ball the way the ball moves the way the players move Something is going on. They're trying to catch you short. You know, they may shoot the ball, but it's going to be right at the end of that shot clock. They don't come down the floor and just jack up a three because everybody's out of position and all that kind of stuff. So now, now I did agree with that assessment up until this past season. I thought they were just chunky shots. But I thought this season they had a little bit more direction this past season. They're going to get better because they're young. Yeah. They're yeah. awfully young. Now, some of these teams need to dump some of the older players and get, get more youth. Uh, you know, basketball is a tough sport. 
some people don't think it is. It it is really tough on your body, and they need to get rid of some of these older players and get them some young talent. Like it, for me, the Rockets need a big man. Stephen Allen Thank to you. me is not the one. Thank you. Thank you. I've okay, now that's a good question. That's that's a good lead in. I, I a good like, segment. They need a big okay, power. they have. I'm sorry. Who's speaking? Someone talking? That was me. I was just saying they need to. I always thought I said this on your show uh, some weeks and months ago when I was on the we, we had a conversation about the Rockets. They need a big man. You know, they need a rebounder. They need an enforcer in the middle. That's just something okay. they don't. They don't have that presence. They just don't have that okay. presence. Okay. Okay. Right now, I'm gonna tell you what they have in the in at Sun. They have Shagoon. They have Prince Shagoon. Who's going to be playing 33 minutes to 35, 35 minutes a game to only leaves 13 to 15 minutes left behind them? Then you have Stephen Adams. You do know they have yeah. Stephen Adams now. Yeah. Awful man. If he can stay healthy. Okay. And then you also have Jock Landell. So you're saying that's not enough? Nope. Okay. Not, well, that not, means they, 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 got, they got height. They got height, Jeff. Jeff, okay. that's height. That's not, that's not so much talented but, guys. But, they just, they okay. role players. Let's get to my next question. Huh? Go ahead. I, Go ahead, I was gonna say I, I I think the best player that they have is Sagoon. With, with Sagoon going down, that's the reason they missed the playoffs. Yeah. I think is, he's I, a starter, but they need someone to come out. Look at okay, take take for instance, take Gabbard with Dallas. They went out, look what they went out, Dallas just went out and did. Rockets yep. need a guy like that. Physical. I man. agree. I agree. Yeah, okay, physical, but but you have to but you have to look at what the Rockets have done with that team, and I think well, they're in the right good. direction. When you yeah. when you look at that particular team with Sagoon, now the bruiser that you're talking about, Bert, is the Stephen Adams. You don't want him playing 24, 25 minutes a game. No, I don't. But so, but, they, but they need someone better than him. But you know. but which one is out there? But see, this this is what I, I, I got to look and see who, who I think. But, I don't know anybody in a free agent right now out there. Right. I can feel that role, bag up role. But, I mean, Adam been in the league. How many years? Been 10 years? Right. Now, but they, what you have to look years. at on here, Bird, is that you have to look at it's always on one side to say what the Rockets may need. Yeah. But it's not that easy for another team to just give up one of their quality no, of course players. Not. So, so, so the thing yeah. is, so you 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 you're getting your pieces together, and what you what you have <clears> is <throat> with, with Stephen Adams, the bruiser that can come in. That's a veteran, and they need some veteran leadership because the entire team is young. So yeah, they need yeah, some veteran yeah. leadership. They, okay. you look at you look at at Jalen Green. He's young. Thompson. Yeah. He's young. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of people didn't give him credit when they got Dylan Brooks. But Dylan Brooks yeah. did a hell of a job for them because they they need that. Jeff Green is old. So yeah. they, they need a few they some veterans, more though. old people. They, okay. they, they got some veterans, though. They do have some Go veterans. ahead, Jeff, and then give me a shot. Go ahead, Jeff. Okay. Okay. With that being said, that was a good segue into my next point. With the third pick in the draft, you got Clingman on the board, there Donovan Clingman from UConn. You have Zach Eady. From no, Purdue. No, 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 no. You take one of those three big men. I'm gonna, I, I want to start. With, okay, I'm gonna start with Philip. Do you take one of the big men, Philip, with number three? Okay. What I would think, just to improve the team, you got two positions they need six. a little help in. But what the present team is, yes, Kevin's right. You kind of undump some of the the older guys you don't need. But Cleveland is definitely a guy I would take at three. You would okay. start you you put him behind Kevin Adams and let him learn. He's seven two. He's on a national championship team two times. Every time I've seen him play, he hustles, yeah. he runs, he passes, he shoots those little close in shots. Yeah. He That's will help. Utah, he can right? only get better. Then yeah. if you get a chance, you get you a guard that can back up Fred Van Fleet, who can score yeah. as well as yeah. them two spots will help them elevate another 10 games on what they won this year because. I went full with Zach Eady. He's not the Rockets type of guy. The Rockets, yeah. he will slow them down. Klingland will get in there and yeah. run up and down that floor with them, play defense with his heart and hands and feet, and give – and Adams can school him. But now, if you can get something better, you do it. But if you're going to keep the pick, that's who I would take. Okay, you quick question. Carl, who would you take with number three? Who would you take? I, I'm still sold on trading the pick uh, for – 
uh, getting a backup like a Marcus Smart if he'll uh, buy into it. Because I think that backup and that veteran leadership, see, I believe that the Rockets package of centers and, and they are young and everything is about chemistry, building chemistry. That is why Dallas is where they are now because they had a chance for that chemistry to match. Because they, they didn't even a make the playoffs train. last year. But they Dallas made a didn't make the playoffs train. last year. But this year, their chemistry meshed and they are in the championship. So it's about chemistry. It is you can't just put somebody on that team and say that's gonna make them better. But that's what even they though need. he might be a better player. It's <laughs> about the, but that, chemistry. That's what and they I need. think with with uh Sagoon, Adams, and uh, uh, Londale at center, oh, no, you can go. build chemistry. And I would bring in a Marcus Smart with, with, with a trade um, and the number three pick. And we would take it from there. And if he'll play that uh, first back up off the bench, that'll take us to the next level. Okay, next. Bert, will you, who will you take at three? Man, I like a, I know they need a big man, but like a, a good point that uh, Kevin brought up, they got Adam. So they're not going to – and the NBA now is a, uh, is a dying league for uh, – Big men. The game was built on big men, and I always been a, I always been partial to big men. I was a, you know, I'm gonna go. I, I before Kareem became Kareem, I, I was in love with Louis Alcindor. You know, we had Will Chamberlain. And saying that, you know, if I had to get a guy, me, I like the guy from UConn, Coulter. I love that kid, man. That, that Castle, Castle. Oh, oh Castle. Stephon Castle. Castle. Stephon Castle. He was a true freshman. True freshman. You know. Yeah, and he's a true baller. <laughs> Tell so you taking that three? Him. You taking that three? If I if I had if I had the third pick and I couldn't get what I really needed, I wouldn't pass on him. Okay. Coach, already play that him. spot though, and you got Coach somebody. Brigham. I wouldn't pass on him. I wouldn't okay, Coach Brigham uh, time. Who would you take at number three, Coach? I I would take uh, Donovan Klinger. Uh, okay. I think they need they need that that big man. I think Zach Eady is a, a project. Yeah. And he needs he needs a lot of footwork, a, yeah. a lot of strength training, and a lot. Yeah, he yeah, probably yeah, he needs to go to the D League for for a year or two, because he's gonna be a talent. I mean, you can't oh, coach yeah. seven five. Yeah. You can't yeah, coach seven five. Coach. <laughs> but he's you know, gotta he's he's gotta get a little better because every guy that I've ever known that went to the NBA mm -hmm. has said to, like they asked uh, T.J. Ford. What was what was the difference between college and the pros? And he said it was the speed of the game. Mm -hmm. Th mm -hmm. Things had to slow down for him for him to be successful. Okay. These guys are the best of the best of the best. Yeah. So Zach Eady is not ready, but this boy Donovan Klinger, he and and as as a uh, uh, Bertram said. Uh, What's the guy's name? Uh, Castle? Castle. Those okay. two guys are really, really yeah. good. Oh, yeah. They don't want one national championship. They are really good. Okay, so Castle, Coach, your pick. I can't give up Klingon, though. Clean. He's good. Okay, Klingon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you can, yeah, you can. Yeah. If, if, if I'm the Rockets, I'm I'm looking for a veteran, an established veteran. I, I trade the pick because what I'm going to pick isn't going to put me over the hump. I have enough young pieces right now that are young and talented. Yeah. So I, I need an established veteran that really can, like Bert said, I'm like a Paul George or somebody, he stays healthy that can really score the basketball yeah. for him because you have yeah. the younger pieces in place. You have the yeah. bag up with Steven yeah. Adams. You have Dylan Brooks that can guard. You have Van Fleet, but you have Thompson. You have Green. You have yeah. uh, Jabari Smith. You still have those young people. You got to get another veteran in there. But there's nothing in that draft that's going to move the needle for me this year. I trade the right. pick and right. possibly get a Paul George or somebody. Yeah. How long Paul George been playing? That's interesting. Long time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. If, if okay, then my that's my time now. Uh, I guess um wow, uh, there's a lot of guys on the board. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go with Klingman as well. And I'm gonna tell you why I'm gonna go with Klingman. I'm going with Klingman only because. Aquaman, 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 they call him Aquaman. That's <laughs> Stephen Adams. Yeah. He only has one year left on his deal. 
Okay, remember, he only had one year left on the deal. So he's only going to be here one year, then he's going to be gone. So you go ahead and let Klingman go ahead and study under those two guys. And then when he comes off the books, Klingman will be now the bag up to uh, Shagoon. Now you have your two big men, and now you set for the next 10 to 12 years with those two big men. Shagoon's not really a center. He's and that's not, true. He's not he's, a center. That that's so true. true. That's the well, one. I don't know if he's a boy either. Well, yeah. I, don't know if, I don't know if he's, he's a boy. He's not a, big he's not a center. Guy. I don't know where he's playing, but he's not a center. Hey, okay, Phil, but if you player. look at him, but he's, he's, he's real, a basketball player. He's a basketball player. He's, 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 he's real crafty with the basketball. Exactly. He's yeah. real crafty. I mean, I had good seats on a couple occasions to sit there and watch him because I heard people been calling him a fraud. I didn't see it. No. He can play. I like right? him. I like him. Personally, coach, I like coach, him. Coach, I want to ask you a question, Coach. Finished. Since you have coached for many years, please explain to me, Coach, this. How is it that Zach Eady, was the co was the player of the year back to back? Year. Hold on, hold on, Phil. I know where you're going. I can, I can see your facial expression. <laughs> back to back years, the player of the year. How how is it he outscored Klingman thirty seven to ten? But yet Klingman, you think is a better prospect? I Move want on. you to explain that to us since you're the coach and you can explain it better than us. Go ahead, coach. I think Klingman has a better upside because he's got better footwork. He can run. And he rebounds. If you notice, Zach Eady doesn't, he didn't, he didn't, it's like Bertram said, he did not uh, protect the board the way he should have. At seven foot five, he would have hated me coaching him because I'd have been <laughs> in his butt every day. <laughs> what else? What else? I mean, what else? when I look at people like Shaq, uh, uh, Chamberlain, Russell, mm -hmm. and, and guys like that, they define what the big man was supposed to be like. You didn't bring that stuff in there. They no, were sending that stuff back to half court. Yeah. yeah. At seven foot five. Yeah. Dominate. Yes. What, what, from, I, what I from saw. His freshman, is, yeah, go ahead. That, what I saw is he got very tired because he was dominating yeah. uh, uh, in the first quarter of the first half. Yeah. And then he got very tired and. It took him a long time to regain his win. So if he cannot uh, maintain in a college game, what is he going to do in the pro game? The and you are yeah. talking about good. being good point. ready for the next level. Uh, is that the problem that, that Caitlin Clark is having? Uh, she wasn't ready for the next level? What you think? Yeah, I see yeah. you, Brother Allen. What you think? You ready? Hey, don't say she's not ready. That's what I said. There, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of yeah. the, your Hall of Famers that started out that just didn't burn it up right out of the gate. If you yeah. look at her right now, she's figuring it out. She, she's a she in the you, last game. She she had to she had she's still getting used to the speed of the game and the strength of yeah. the game. She thinks it well, but once she figures this thing she's out, she's yeah, she. Yeah, is, is that also the same used, for Angel Reese? She's Say also getting used to, to the physicality of the game. That's the yeah, thing. Same thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is that the same thing for Angel Reese? Of course. She's gonna have, but but the thing about this, and with those type of players, I look at a skill level. Angel Reese's skill level isn't as high as somebody no, else in her position. Now no, she no, was no. had a lot of talent that she played with. She right. was a little stronger and things of that nature. But right. when you look at Caitlin Clark, she reminds me of female version of Pistol Pete Marriage. Yeah. She yeah. she has it. She got she has it. Okay. Yeah, Anybody yeah. else watch, have watched a couple of WNBA games and, and yeah. see what she's <laughs> going through, what she's doing? Right. Well, here's here's what she's dealing with called physicality. She wasn't, she wasn't, she didn't get touched up like that in college. She getting touched up right now. These are grown ass women. Yep, they said kicks yeah. on them and flooring them. They flooring them. She hitting the floor a lot. Yeah. yeah, it's like the it's like a see. Here's here's let me say this and I'm gonna shut up. But see the the WNBA now has been in existence over 25 years. Am I about right there in the right ball? Yeah, right. something like that. Yeah, and right. That league has that league has grown and it has gotten more physical. And now those women are on a level almost like men with the physicality. I really yeah, saw I agree. 
Did you see how they how that girl got slammed that girl, the floor real bad? Boy. Yeah, I saw that. Oh, he's going on soldiers, he's he's getting getting right up. Yep. 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 They're not, yep. not, yep. not yep. taking right. second field. She had a bell run for a little bit. They're not gonna leave. She didn't cry about it. She didn't cry about it. She didn't cry about it. She had a good attitude about it. She got three texts already this season. Did you know that? <laughs> Kevin Clark got three technical fouls already this season. Okay, Bert, here, let but me let me, let me make a statement. Let me let me ask a question. I want to ask ahead. a question. Go ahead. Michael Jordan was getting touched up. Yeah. And what did he do? He had to figure it out and go get in the weight room. Yeah. Yeah. He's only yeah. played yeah. less yeah. than ten games. Michael Nine Jordan games. was in some years. He had to go through Boston and then Detroit was touching him up. And he yeah, said, I got to get in the weight room. Yeah. Give him some yeah. time, Bert. She yeah. only been no, in 10 games. No, 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 no. Don't, don't, you misunderstood me. I'm just saying what she's going through right now. She yeah, don't exactly. get better. I'm yeah. a fan. I'm a, hey, yeah. man, I'm a fan of that girl. Yeah. Hey, she can play that ball. To me, she got, she, man, she can play with some men. She can get out there. But she, we'll see how it goes. Right now, Indiana Fever are one and seven. So it's not relating to wins yet. Win. Uh, exactly. Still the team in the still WNBA is the they, Aces. And yeah, uh, I they, believe they, they're they, going to they build, build a team around them sooner or later. Yeah, got to get some players. Okay. okay. They're going to build but, a team I mean, she got a Leah Boston who is good also. That's right. That's, That's only one. one. Okay. That's only All one. Right. All right. Well, uh, it's going to be interesting. But they, they really rattle off, off the name for the Aces. They're loaded. Yeah. yeah well, the they, Aces? They, 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 they they Wilson. That, yeah. That's what I'm saying. The they're loaded. And you can yeah. Chelsea Plum. You just right. keep going. They have yeah. a lot of talent yeah. around them. But <laughs> when you have this name, Leah Boston, and that's it. Yeah. We, we, yeah. we can definitely say that Angel Reese, Caitlin Clark, and others have impacted the WNBA landscape yeah. brought in money and it's from Stanford and the sparks is good too. Yeah. Yes, she is. Yeah, yeah. ticket sales are going through the roof. Yeah. Okay. The girl um, went to the sparks from Stanford. She went yeah. to I want to go into the Astros. Are they missing Dusty Baker yet? <laughs> Man, they been missing Dusty Baker. <laughs> <laughs> they missed Dusty as soon as they made that move. They missed Dusty. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What, what, yes, what do they you think are. they need to do, uh, Brother Bingham? Bring them. Well, um, you know, it doesn't look like to me that he has uh, figured out his lineup yet. Yeah. He, he he keeps changing. Dusty had a had a reason for moving guys around and bringing mm -hmm. guys in at a certain time. It just mm -hmm. looks like every time they play, they have somebody different. <laughs> and they can't be, you can't call it uh, load sharing or whatever they call it now in the pros when they give those starters a break. I mean, they ain't played that many games yet. Mm -mm. So I think he's still trying to figure out who his best nine are. Uh, you know, they're not swinging the bat like they were. And and our pitchers are really not. Uh, Dusty had a problem with pitching because he didn't, they, they, they. That was the biggest problem that Dusty had his last season, you know. Well, pitching. you know, you got people like Verlander who's not, he's not, I mean, how old is Verlander now? 41. Yeah, yeah. so it's almost time for him to, if he's going to stay in the game, he better go to the bullpen, you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of things that they need to do to, to make some changes. However, some of their best ball players aren't swinging the bat like uh, right. third Breakman? baseman. Yeah, he's Breakman. not swinging the bat like he was. Uh, right. you uh, that young boy at the shortstop, he's really Damn. doing a good job this year. Uh, Altuve is game. Altuve. Yeah. Who are we gonna put on first base? Are we gonna bring in this boy from that just went a ten day stint with uh, Where are you? Cowboys? Or are we going to keep uh the young man we have on there already? And neither Abreu? one of them are swinging the bat that well. Well, Abreu is the guy that got from the White Sox. That's the and guy that's coming back. League. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, going back to this new guy, Joe Espada, I think that's his name. Mm -hmm. that's he's not a, you know, he's not a proven manager yet. Dusty had years and years and tons and tons of knowledge and experience and was patient with the game. Dusty never got rattled, 
because he he knew it at, at, at any moment the game could change, you know. And he was he was always cool and calm and collected. And this guy doesn't have any uh, a proven record. He had never managed a team before. He's never been the manager of a of a national a major league baseball team. So you know he's still in a learning curve himself. You know he's still trying to figure out some things. Like you said, his lineup been changing left and right. Yes. So. You know, he's got some learning to do, but Dusty was, you know, Dusty was the man, you know. That kind of experience and knowledge is just, you can't, you can't, you know, you can only earn that throughout the years of being in the game, you know. And this this guy got a long way to go. Joey Spinata got a long way to go. To get and, Dusty and, had and, the and, and, in his mouth, yeah. and, you know, he, he, yeah. he just said, hey, man, I've been around. You can't really tell me nothing. I mean, I, 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 I batted in this league. I, I've hit – home runs in this league for years and years, you know, so and they, the, the players recognize that. They recognize this is Dusty Baker, a legend. Yeah. So when they All the talk to him and he talked to them, <laughs> it means something. It, right. They feel that. And, and they want to go out there and play and respect that. Brother Allen, what you got to say about it? I'm I'm with I'm with with Bert on that man. It, you know Bregman isn't hidden, and and just like Coach said as well, Bregman's not hidden. You're trying to figure it out at first base. I think a big piece that they're missing is the catcher, because the catcher that they let go is a good signal call. Yeah. Yes, so I does. think they're missing that part of the game as well. Uh, what was his name, Maldonado or something yeah. like that? Maldonado. Yeah. 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 So I think that's a piece that they're really really missing as well. He knew how to handle those pitches and things of that nature. And that was an extension for Dusty. That's a good point, where, That's a good you know, point. Yeah, where Dusty was just, like you say, he was just so cool and calm over yeah. there. Never got rattled. He knew his next move. So right yeah. now with them struggling, I think, with the young manager, he's been around coaching, but he hasn't yeah. led the team. So Make I think decision. he's kind of panicking in some spots right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. So, I would agree yeah, with that. They're, they're, they got to figure it out quick. But, but without Real that being said, or they, let, or they won't. But without that being ahead, said, Bill. they're only five games out of first place. Thank the you. American League Ooh. West is weak. Ooh. So with 105 games healthy, left to play, Phil. With 105 uh, games left to play. A lot of games left to play. Exactly. But, but we're not as healthy as we have been either. So no spot is not proven. The catcher is gone. The other catcher hits a little better, but he does not call the game. Maldonado called no hitters. So that says yeah, a lot yeah. about how he can command pitches. Right, right, but right. I think give them to the All Star break before you really right. cut them up. Yeah, you, you should know, be, because they get a little more healthy. They haven't had all their pitches there either. I don't think when uh, you, some of them have been on the roster all year. That's been in training camp that they had. I can't think of their names right now. But but when you look at them, Phil, you got to step back and just ask yourself, how good. Is this Astro team really not as good as in the past? By the answer that so, question, you're right. So now, when you say they're only five out, and if you continue not to play well, that you're five go to yeah. if five go to ten, yeah. it does, but good. it hasn't happened yet. It's that's what no, I'm no, saying. No, potentially, yeah. you were right. The the kid could explode, but until that time, you know, just based on the fact that you still got, like you said, Altuve, Pena, yeah. a few of those yeah. guys who got rings. They can galvanize the guys together and say, hey, look, man, this, right. this is not us. I'm going to give you an example. This is the honest truth. I ran into Enos Cabell one time two years ago, and he told me that he went into the clubhouse and told Altuve, blankety, blankety, blank, you better run down that line. And he, hey, and maybe two weeks later, they went on the tip because they were playing pretty bad two years ago around this yeah. time. Not this bad, but... He was like, man, you got to go in there and tell them. Somebody got to. And then he said, Altuve, in turn, got the guys going. You don't see him on the field, but they said in the clubhouse, he a whole different person. I got that from Enos Cabell. Yeah. Okay. Understood. You know, they, 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 hey, guys, they our last thing I, I want to broach in there is how good are the Texans going to be this coming football year? And has anybody kept up with the USFL or the UFFL? Anybody? It's horrible. I've been watching it. I've been, I've been, watching, it. I've been watching it. Man, it's it's, it's the product horrible. Me. No, no, no. The thing is good. It's the roughnecks. It's I was the same. It's, it's entertaining. Oh, the they got some good players there. Yeah. Okay. They they got some right. players that the NFL gonna pick up. Oh yeah. You know the Birmingham the Birmingham Stallions has a kicker 
that's from uh, I think Katie, Katie. somewhere Houston, Houston area. Man, this dude kicking sixty four yard field goal. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So he gonna get an NFL contract. And I, I watched I watched the, I watched the the Renegades play this Sunday when they played. Uh, they, they had the game. They played the Michigan Panthers. They had them on the ropes, <laughs> but they let them they they, they 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 let them get they let them come back in the last three minutes. And I don't know. I'm, I don't want to. I don't want to step on anybody's toes, but I just don't think they got the right coach for that job. What do you think, Kevin? Well, I, if you lose as many games as he does. You ain't gonna get I, that many opportunities he, anymore. He, he, done <laughs> well, he done he done something in this last game that they he got called out for, and I was like, you know what? The broadcaster was sure right. He 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 made a boot. Yeah. He 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 wanted to do they got this rule in the in that league about like a you throw the red flag like a challenge. And he challenged on a two-point conversion. <laughs> oh wow. Mm -hmm. He challenged on a two point conversion, and like mm -hmm. one of the broadcasts, I don't know those guys broadcasting those games, but the guy said, "Why would he do that on a two point conversion when he could have saved it for something really needed?" You know, yeah. you talk about a two point conversion. The coach, and they got something called a mega challenge or something, and he and that was the that was his best one, and he used it on a two point conversion. <laughs> <laughs> Bird, you really, you really, you really upset over this one, aren't you? <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, come on, man, the two point conversion. Practice, man. Practice, man. Practice. <laughs> when the training camp start for the NFL. So, uh -huh. so say again, call. When does the uh, training camp start for the NFL? Ooh, they all, everybody in OTAs now. Uh, yeah, that's not really, yeah. Yeah, they're in OTAs right now. They're the last day of OTAs. Yeah. And then they go back to uh, the, the training, uh, I think, in about another week or two. Uh, okay. But uh, look at the Texans. Okay, let's real quick, briefly talk about the Texans. Um, first of all, I love what they did this offseason. I, I like the draft. I like what they did in free agency. I think the only thing the Texans need right now is to add maybe one more interior offensive line. You have yes. many, many guys that are still free agents. They still have plenty of cap space, salary cap space, in which to improve this team. And I understand what they're doing right now. They got they got OTAs. They just finished today. The There's the last day of OTAs. So now what you do is you go back and look at them and see who look good and who don't look good. And now you make a determination, okay, what do we still need? And now with the with the available free agency money you have, you can go look at the free agents that are available and see who fits your team best. And that's what you're going to start seeing within the next two to three weeks. You're going to start seeing Houston – Cutting some players, and then you'll start seeing adding some players from other teams. That's what you're going to see within the next two to three weeks. But I like the team. I just think they need another interior offensive lineman and maybe another uh, uh, defensive back, whether it's a safety or a cornerback, somebody who can cover. If they can solidify those two positions, I think, and be healthy this season, reasonably healthy, I think they can win 12 games. I think they can go 12 and 5. Well, it's certainly something to look forward to, especially based upon. Last year, making the playoffs the way it ended, DeMarco Ryan, C.J. Stroud, it, it, the, the sky's the limit, and we look forward to it. Uh, last thing I want to mention, for those of you that keep up with track, uh, there was a historic 200 meters a uh, couple of weeks back, and Cindy McLaughlin, the hurdler, she ran in that 200 meters, and she whooped the field of established 200-meter uh, yeah. girls and she looks good she says she's gonna run the intermediate hurdles again and uh she's at the top of her game and the olympics is i believe uh, next month july two months away. and two months away. say again in two months away it's late july okay so uh no. as always no, it, it, it is one of the premier events and one of the things we want to look at is how the U.S. team in basketball fares against the world with, quote, unquote, our best players. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, it's just going to be as competitive, and they may lose. And if they win, it ain't going to be no blowout. Because oh. the world has caught up with LeBron James, Kevin Durant, they are not going to outdistance those other players. You might think so, but I'm trying to tell you, uh, the world has caught up 
in basketball. Everybody across the pond is saying, oh, we can go to America and make millions. So they are hooping in their gyms too. They hooping in their gym. There is not that much difference between Le LeBron James and those European players. And we're going to prove this once and for all. Cool. Hey, can, I ask my, can, I, can I ask my coach? Can I ask my coach? Hold on. Let me hear the brother Kevin talk first, Jeff. Okay, go I'll ahead. Just, Kevin. I'll just make one statement and, and, and make you can take it right back. I listened to uh, Gino Ariema. Okay. I'm and he him. made a statement. He said, the difference now in basketball, it's starting in AAU. Okay. And he said, the reason being is that in AAU basketball, you're playing five to six games in a week. No practice. No practice. But the <laughs> players overseas mm -hmm. are practicing five days a week <laughs> and playing mm -hmm. one, so they're perfecting their skills. Okay. And I picked up on that years ago. They start getting closer and closer and closer. So now when you look at the NBA, a lot of stars from overseas. That's true. Look at that. 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 He said, these guys come over here, they know they can make money, but they come over here and they just play the game. Yeah. They don't come over here saying, yeah. I got to get 20 minutes. I got to get my touches. I got to get my points. He said, they don't care about that because mm -hmm. they play team ball. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he said, that's how they learn over there. And that's what they bring over here. No egos. And it's funny no that egos. you mentioned AAU because I heard another coach, uh, he was an ex-coach from the NBA. He said uh, he wished he'd never let his son play AAU because they don't practice. And what they do is they bring kids in that never practice with them when they do practice. They just bring them in on the weekend and let them play. That's play. not right. I mean, basketball is a highly skilled sport. I mean, you got to learn how to dribble, how to shoot, how to pass. You, I mean, free, free throws. You got to learn court awareness is why you play at a young age. Because you got to know where you are on the court. What do you do when you're at that point? And that's the hardest thing for a coach to teach from seventh grade all the way to ninth grade. Court awareness. You don't get that in AAU ball. Those gotcha. guys are out there just playing. If you notice, two years ago, three years ago, what did the Rockets look like? Was I wrong? No. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Oh. Yeah. right. They did the same thing. Right. And so you 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 can't do that. It, it it you have to practice. And you're you're absolutely right. We're not telling teaching our kids. That practice. I told my grandson the other day, you're going to play just like you practice. Mm -hmm. Well, if you don't practice, what do you think your play going to look like? Well, exactly. It is. Yep. Hey, hey, but, well, but coach, real quick, real quick, real quick, call, real call, coach, do you think there's going to be anybody that's going to beat the USA team? Do you know what the USA team, do you want me to tell you what the USA team look like? Or do you already know? Tell me who, they, who, who we got. Okay. We got Drew Holiday, Steph Curry, Devin Booker, Anthony Edwards, Tyrese ha uh, Halliburton, Joel Embiid, Anthony Davis, LeBron James, Kevin Durant, Jason Tatum, Bam Adamayo, and Kawhi Leonard. Wow. Do you think anybody's going to beat them, Coach? I'm going to say they should not beat them. <laughs> mm -hmm. but, but, you know, um, fate is a fickle lady, man. So if they don't go out there with their best game, they're gonna get, they could get beat. They could get I, beat. I agree. And one thing about the international teams is they play together. 
and they yes. are inspired to be America. They play together. Many of them have played together since they were 10, all the way up to 20. And they've been together for years and they have talent. So we're going to see. The question will be answered. And we will keep reporting. We will keep talking about it. And our next show will be in two weeks. And we're going to talk about it again here on Sunny Five Side Live Sports Day. Uh, uh, this, I believe, is our 20th episode. I'm Baruti Carl Alexander. Uh, this has been a great conversation, and we will continue talking about sports on Sports Tape. Do we have any last statements that we want to make before we go? I do. I want to say thank you guys very much for inviting me. Um, great show you have. I was looking forward to being on here, and, and, and thank you guys for thinking enough of me to invite me on your show. Keep doing the good work. I'll be watching. Hey, thank, thank you, you again. Thank you, Kevin. We brother. appreciate you coming on the show. Yeah. All right. Peace and power, hey, everybody. Hey, coach. We'll see you hey, next coach. time. We thank you, Coach. We thank you, Coach, for coming on the show as well, Coach. Thank you, All man. All right. Thank we'll you. see you next time. Thank you. We'll see All you right. next time.